Hey, hey, hey. What it do, what it do, what it do. This is your boy, KQKC Boxing Network. And you know, and you know, I be working. I want to thank everyone for a great weekend. I called the DAZN card from 2 o'clock. Then I went over to ESPN. Then I went over to Showtime. From 2 p.m. Central Time to 12.45 a.m. Your boy, your boy KQ was grinding for my subscribers. Your wish is my damn command. Now, let's talk about one of the fights that take taking place Saturday. And we're talking about none other than Connor Ben and Chris Algieri. Now, of course, after that win with Chris Algieri, all of a sudden he wants to face Adrian the problem Broner. And that's in the U.S. Now, on Saturday night, this fight took place in Liverpool. Raising, rising, I'm sorry, welterweight contender, Conor Ben. Now, keep in mind, Conor Ben is 20-0 with 13 KOs. Don't get too excited. And later I'll tell you why. He did continue his unbeaten streak and secure the biggest win of his career with the brutal fourth round knockout of former world champion Chris Algieri. Now, I called that fight, of course, and it was a beautiful right hand. It was flushed right on the nose of Chris Algieri. He felt that punch and he went out on his feet before he hit the canvas. And he was still sleep cold. Then he woke up. Great victory. Great victory. Now, it was all Ben who had full control of the contest from the very first round. Just when it appeared that Algeria was uh, starting to find a groove in the fourth round, uh, Ben connected with a two-punch combination. That sent the 37-year-old veteran down and out. And the fight was quickly waved off. Now, in 2021, was a big year for the young Conor Ben, who is the son of none other than great Nigel Ben, with two other big victories, a first-round blowout of Samuel Vargas and a dominating decision win over Adrian Granados. Now, Algeria was the most experienced opponent of Ben's career. Now, get this. Algeri, who we thought was retired, PhD nutritious, is the biggest opponent he has ever had. Just keep that in your bag for a minute. Now, the son of, like I said, British legend Nigel Ben is looking for an even bigger game in his next ring appearance. Now, Ben would like to face the winner of February British Grudge match between Amir Khan and Cal Briggs. Bonk! That's a number one. That's a bullshit fight. Now, for some reason, Conor Ben want to fight the old and crippled. Now, no, no pun intended, but Kell Brooks is damaged goods. And I'm not talking about just the both 
eye injuries, his age, his reflexes. He's a pretty much washed up fighter. Had a great career. Could have made a whole lot of money with Amir Khan in the Battle of the London, the Sheffield, and um, Bolton. But both guys wrecked that shit. Primarily uh, Amir Khan. Now, this is where Ben got it all screwed up. Why would you want to fight either one? Old, chinny, not popular, and definitely won't make any money. When they about to have a grudge match themselves. No one, they want to touch it. Because they know that 10 years ago, Amir Khan and Amir Khan and Cal Brook could have made $100 million a piece in Wimbledon Stadium. It was like the Battle of the London. And, like I said, grudge match. Because they both was in the Olympics. Uh, Olympians. And they both are Olympians. And they both are from different areas of London. Sheffield and Bolton. That's right. Cal Brook is from Sheffield. Amir Khan from Bolton. They had a little rivalry going. But they pretty much fucked it up. Ten years ago. Then he came over here and got with Freddie Roach. But Freddie Roach had another charge that he was in love with. And that's Manny Pacquiao. So King Kong, Amir Khan, uh, had to pretty much go to Virgil Hunter and other um, promoters. I mean, um, trainers. So that gravy train had left the dock. Now, as I move on, being promoter, who is none other than my favorite promoter right now, and this is only temporary, is Eddie Hearn. Now, Eddie Hearn has been going to bat for his fighters. I like that. That's what I respect. Bob, you go to bat for your fighter. I'm talking about all of them. Not just one or two that you like. Bob. Now, of course, Eddie Hearn, like I said, is the promoter of Colin Ben. Who would like to match him up against former division world champion Adrian Broner? Broner will not come at a cheap price. And the probability of him traveling over to the UK is rather low. And let me tell you why. Adrian Broner has a lot of problems right now. And no, 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 it's not women problems. Well, kind of. It's not boxing problems. It's life problems. It is uh, law problems. He's getting sued. It's possibility that he might go to jail. Now, if he would take that fight, he won't have a great training camp because he's going to be in and out of court. And number two, he is not going to get a passport. Because if you round all that shit he been doing, I'm quite sure we look at it as a felony on his record. So therefore, his ass going to have to stay put. Or Conor Ben will have to come over here and fight him. And also, yes, he will command a big purse. And let me tell you why. Because he got big money to pay back. This would be his perfect opportunity. Eddie would pay. Call him out. Bob ain't going to pay, but Eddie would. We know what Bob did with Lopez. Y'all better wake the fuck up. So, your favorite fighter. Your fighter that loves to do the histrionics and all that shit. Dancing, coming in and shit. Could be dancing for the inmates pretty soon. 
Motherfucker get on that card table and do a motherfucker a uh, 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 herky jerky. And then they over there fighting to see who get his ass. How about that? Ha! Wow! Ha! ha wow! And now, as I move on. However, Ben is willing to take the fight in the United States. So that's a good thing. Now, these fights aren't tests. And every time I say they aren't tests, it sounds like arrogance. But it's just confidence. And this was Ben told on, on the zone in his so-called post-interview. Now, like he said, I'm ranked top five with no sanctioned bodies. And I'm top five for a reason. No one has done that to Chris Igeri. Yes, they have. Now, of course, Earl Spence. Chris Algeri was his step-up fight into stardom. Yes, Earl gave him a beat, beat, beat down. Yes, Earl Spence got him out of there. But of course, Nigel, you would do that to Algeri. Because if you understand that Algeria is not the same fighter he was when he fought Earl Spence and some years have went past don't you think that he's a little older now don't you think he's a little slower now don't you think he has been inactive now now I get confidence I get confidence builder but don't be a damn fool Chris Algieri, which most thought he was retired, most people thought he was working for other fighters, being a nutritionist. But in the same breath, I may add, he's older, he's slower. That's why I get to tell you, and that's why I'm telling you right now, Conor Ben is no top welterweight. Conor Ben is like a sixth man, put it that way, in the NBA. He's in the building, no doubt about it. He's in the building, which is the welterweight division. But he's still on the bench. So, in other words, he's still waiting to get in the game. In other words, he's waiting to get his shot. In other words, he got to work hard to be that top guy. Other words, <laughs> wow, all right. He hasn't proven anything that's gonna make me a believer that he's gonna be or got the goods. He's no Bruce Anderson. No, we can't look at him after one fight or two or three and say, Oh man, he got the goods. Oh man, he gonna be something else. Oh, man, watch out, Terrence. Watch out, Earl. Oh, watch out, Keefe. All right? No, he's not that guy. And stop trying to make him out that guy. Yes, he looked nice against Chris Algeri. No doubt about it. But look, I got some news for you. I look good against a fourth grader. How about that? That's what it's kind of equal out to. All right? I'm 55 next month, and I'm fighting a fourth grader. I'm jabbing. I'm moving on his little ass, right? I'm moving to the left. I'm moving to the right. The next thing you know, I'm fainting to the left. Then I little, little boy go to the left. Then I pop him with that right hand and knock his little ass out. And I'm 200-something pounds. Wow. <laughs> wow. Then they call me a star, huh? Well, this is equal to the same thing they're doing to Conor Ben. Conor Ben still is green. Conor Ben still need to be groomed. Conor Ben need to step up after each fight. Not big steps. Just take little steps. All right? But still keep moving, baby. Still keep moving. See, in 2022, get me the winner of Amir Khan, he believes. Now, I don't know what kind of thinking he's looking at. Because, like I say, he's trying to buy antique. <laughs> wow. You see, he want to fight antique fighters. All right? I ain't going to say throwback fighters because ain't no damn way 
American is a throwback fighter. Now that damn chin. Uh uh. No, no, no. And Kell Brook? Oh man, you talking about a throwback fighter? Oh my god. American. American. I mean, I'm sorry. Uh uh uh. uh Sugar Ray Leonard. He had a problem with the eye. But back then, they didn't have the technology that they have now. So, but it's almost too late now. Matter of fact, it is too late. Too late for this fight. So, I'll say to you, my people. If they don't want it, we'll fight Adrian Broner in America. If Broner don't want it, I fancy my chances against, listen to this, your Dennis Hugas, Conor Ben, if you don't sit your ass down and grow the fuck up. So, I don't know, is Nigel telling you this? I don't know what coach is telling you this. I don't know Eddie is telling you this. But you're not ready yet, son. Yes, you had a great performance for, um, with Chris Algieri. I'm not going to take that win and take it away from you and pretty much twist it. But don't think you're on the level of a Dennis you guys. Oh, don't think you're on the level of a Earl, the true Spence Jr. Don't think you're on the level of a Terrence Bud Crawford. Oh, Oh, don't think you're on the level of any of the top welterweight in the welterweight division. Just keep that in mind, people. This is what promoters, trainers do to the fighters. They move them too fast. And some don't move at all. So, therefore, what you have to do, and I'm no trainer, I'm no boxer. I'm just a boxing fan. I bring you the best content I can. I'm like the 9 o'clock news or 10 o'clock, whatever coast you're on. And I'm giving you the latest and the greatest in the sport of boxing. I'm talking about the sweet science, baby. That's what I'm talking about. I'm bringing you the, the, one, uh, one, uh, the want fights and the fights that we don't want. So, with that in mind, this is another edition of Boxing Updates. Brought to you by no other than KQKC Boxing Network. And yes, I will be doing another video. And once again, oh, once again, hit that like button for this video. I don't know why you all have a damn problem hitting the like button. That should be automatically. So you click in on the video, hit the like button, and listen. And listen and learn. Now, of course, I come on Monday through Friday. I will be off today. I have some very important business to do. You know, I lost my best friend of 27 years. And yes, I will be attending, uh, 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 well, going over his house today. To see his wife. To help out. Clean up. Do what I can. And be a friend. To now. She's my friend. So. Therefore. My oldest daughter. And his daughter. Went to kindergarten together. And that was. 30. 30 years ago. And now. They are still friends to this day and we remain friends to this day so with that come check out your boy KQKC what I told you on the morning after on Sunday is true we work hard I do my research I do my research I make sure that I'm giving you the right information I'm making sure I know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to guess. I'm not going to speculate. I'm going to give you the facts. And far as you are not agreeing with me, that's fine. 
I built my platform off of being honest. I built my platform on, I'm not going to block you for having a, a different opinion than mine. We all, we all have a different opinion when it comes to the sport of boxing. You got Earl friends, you got Bud friends all in my chat. Now, either one, it doesn't bother me. I'm not a big, big fan of either one. So therefore, may the best man win. Oop, I must overspoke because I don't think it will be a fight. I don't think it will be a fight. So, that's my opinion. And yes, tomorrow I will tell you why I believe that. And also, stay tuned for another video from your boy KQKC. And with that, that's all I have for you right now. So, shout out to the almighty LDBC. Shout out to Black Media Row. Shout out to all my devoted subscribers. Thank you for hanging in there with me to 12.45 a.m. Not p.m. A.m. Saturday. Thank you for being there at 2 o'clock. All the way to 12.45 a.m. Yeah, damn. Y'all are some awesome, awesome, awesome subscribers and supporters. That's why I said I'm going to come on at 2 o'clock. Nobody's on. Nobody's not giving my subscribers some boxing. I'm going to give you some damn boxing. And that's what I did. I genuinely care. Now, I can't speak for other creators. Because they do care probably too. But I'm telling you right now. I care about my subscribers. Yes, you send me super chats. I appreciate it. My daughter appreciates it. But sometimes it's more than that. It's more than that. Not sometimes, all the time. Yes, it's appreciated. And oh, definitely is needed. <laughs> Trust me. But I want us to grow together. Together. I don't want to grow without you all. I want you there when I meet that milestone of 10,000 subscribers. I want you right there in your rightful place. Another edition of Boxing Updates brought to you by none other than KQKC. And with that, I want you all to have a great, great day. And I will be back for another, I mean another live stream. I'm out of here. Assalamu alaikum.